Inventory is an asset you own in order to eventually perform sales activities. Shops convert funds, or money, into this asset we call inventory, and then sell this inventory to turn a profit. Inventory is an important asset. In order to efficiently sell and manage inventory, and to ultimately turn a profit, it's important to manage your warehouse properly. A warehouse that is not properly managed can end up causing a variety of problems. In the worst case scenario, you might not be able to find the part the customer wants. A warehouse that is not meticulously managed can make it impossible to find parts that are in stock. A member of the parts staff who mistakenly believes a part to be out of stock may place an additional order generating excess inventory. A poorly managed warehouse does more than just make work less efficient. It can also cause you to lose the trust of your customers. Excess inventory can worsen the cash flow and increase asset risks. This training material will explain how to create an efficient warehouse so that you don't fall into this negative spiral. Let's take a look at how to set up the ideal warehouse. The first step is to determine which items and how many pieces to stock. Determine this based on the demand history. Demand history can be utilized as valuable pieces of data used in a variety of situations in your parts operation. You should sort parts to stock based on the demand history. To do this, we use something called ABC analysis. First, sort parts in order of highest demand. Next, calculate total sales volume. Then, calculate the total sales ratio of each part. Next, calculate the cumulative component ratio of each part. Make these calculations using the actual demand quantity. First, graph the sales volume of each part. Next, graph the cumulative component ratio. Set everything with a cumulative component ratio of 80% or below as category A on your graph. Set the area between 81% and 90% as category B. Set the rest of the graph as Category C. You should stock parts in Category A, which account for 80% of the sales at your shop. Performing an ABC analysis can help you to determine which items need to be stocked. Next, we'll calculate the necessary quantity. First, calculate the daily average demand for each item. 
For example, if you receive orders for a total of 1,800 pieces in a year, your monthly average would be 150 pieces. With 30 working days in a month, the daily average demand becomes 5 pieces. After calculating the daily average demand, use this figure to calculate the necessary stock quantity. The necessary stock quantity is calculated from the daily average demand, the procurement lead time, and the safety stock factor. Procurement lead time indicates the number of days it takes from purchase order until binning. The safety stock factor is set against a demand fluctuation to forecast. We generally use a safety stock factor of around 1.2. For example, with a daily average demand of 5 pieces, a procurement lead time of 3 days, and a safety stock factor of 1.2, your necessary stock quantity would be 18. Use this method to calculate the necessary stock quantity for all items to stock, and then manage your purchasing so that you can maintain these numbers. Once you've determined which items and how many pieces to stock, decide on your overall warehouse layout. Efficient warehouse management requires an efficient layout. Optimizing your part storage layout can improve operation accuracy, productivity, and workability. First, sort the items you plan to stock by size. You should sort each item into one of five sizes, extra large, large, medium, small, and extra small. Next, prepare bins according to the sizes of your racks. You should prepare bins for small and medium items. Partition small item bins to store extra small items. Place large items directly on racks. And place extra large items on pallets. Bins are typically made of plastic or cardboard. For example, consider a six shelf rack that is 1,200 millimeters wide, 400 millimeters deep, and 2,100 millimeters high. If your small bins are 200 millimeters wide and 400 millimeters deep, you can place six bins on a single shelf. If your medium bins are 300 millimeters wide and 400 millimeters deep, you can place four bins on a single shelf. If your bins do not fit neatly in your racks, your part storage will be a mess. Next, calculate the number of racks you need. For example, you can maintain 24 locations in a single rack for medium-sized bins. If you need 60 medium bins, you'll need 3 racks. Determine your layout based on the number of required racks you calculated. Let's go over some important points when determining your layout. First, you need to keep workability in mind when determining aisle width in your parts storage. Aisles for shelves for small and medium items should be around 900 millimeters wide. Aisles in front of racks for extra-large and large items should be at least 1,200 millimeters wide so that trolleys can be passed through.
you should also prepare a workspace equal to around 10% of your parts storage that is out of sight of your customers. Place your work desks in this space. Once you have sorted your items by size, place them together by size. Place extra small items near entrances. Keeping workability in mind, place large parts in the back of part storage. Place medium and small items in the remaining areas. Assign location numbers so that you know immediately where parts are located. Assign letters in alphabetical order to each line of racks. Then assign numbers to racks. Number racks in order with the rack closest to the aisle as number one. Assign numbers to shelves. Number shelves in order with the shelf on the bottom as number one. Assign numbers to bins. Number bins in order with the bin on the left of the shelf, looking from the front, as number one. For bins that have been partitioned to hold extra small items, number each partition left to right, then front to back, with the front left partition as number one. The location numbers for bins that have been partitioned will therefore have an extra digit. Now each bin has a location number. Assigning location numbers will give you an accurate understanding of where parts are located. Knowing where parts are located reduces time spent searching and improves work efficiency. One other important point is to place parts with a high demand near room access. For example, Imagine retrieving a part from a location near the room access to the storage, and then retrieving the same part from inside the warehouse. Although there's only an 8 second difference, this can really add up. Keeping safety in mind, you should also place heavy parts toward the bottoms of racks. If parts of the same type are placed in multiple locations, it can become difficult to manage. Associate a single location number with a single part number. This completes this explanation on how to set up a part storage. Putting this knowledge into practice to improve an inefficient storage should make management much more efficient. Once you've set up an efficient storage, you need to maintain the environment. Use the five S's of safety to realize it. The five S's of safety are sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. Sort means sorting what you do and do not need and clearing away anything not needed. Set in order means determining what, where, and how to place and then putting it into practice. You might have heard the phrase, cleaning is a form of inspection. This means that when you are cleaning or shining in 5S, you should inspect equipment, jigs, and tools. If you find anything out of the ordinary, you should resolve the issue quickly so that items are always kept in new condition. Standardize means consistently sorting, setting in order, and shining, and always keeping things clean. If you discover something out of the ordinary during your daily inspection, 
be sure to take care of it as soon as possible. Sustain means always keeping things sorted, set in order, shining, and standardized. You need to have some maintenance and management rules and frameworks in place as a part of your daily work. This training showed how managing your parts storage more efficiently can allow you to effectively utilize management resources and improve customer satisfaction. We urge you to consider rethinking how you manage your parts storage in order to improve how your shop is managed.